Hello and welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. And today I'm in Scotland at the Banramach Distillery. And the Banramach Distillery was founded in 1898. And ben the Banramach Distillery is one of these distilleries that is has been sold very often. It has been uh, had discontinued production, so it had many production stops and. Uh, the last time it was sold was in 1993 and it was sold to Gordon and MacPhail, the independent bottler. And they opened, reopened the distillery in 1998, 20 years ago. And at this first day they filled the first cask and had it signed by Prince Charles. And this cask now was actually bottled 20 years later at their jubilee and they actually sold or uh, um, auction off the bottles for a beneficial cause so that's a really nice thing and today we find out why the distillery is so traditional and what this tradition is actually how this tradition is affecting the production of this whiskey so I've told you the distillery is really traditional and this is one of these traditional tools it's actually quality control once you have um, grind it down the malt, you fill up this box here with a bit of the grist and you close it and then you shake it and it actually separates uh, the grinded down malt and it separates them into the flour, uh, the grist and the husks. And then you take them to a, a scale, you weigh them and you see uh, if the malt is actually from good quality. Um, this here is also a very traditional tool. It is the old bobby mill. It is a roller mill that just um, grinds down the malt into a, a grist that is later used for the mashing. What is really important is what goes into this mill. The malt for the Ben Romach distillery is from local maltings. That means uh, everything that the distillery uses for malt it comes from Scotland, so a really Scottish product. Um, they take a few different molds for their different expressions. For example, you have the organic, that's an unpeated mold. So the distillery has to shut down for a few days and do a bit of cleaning to get all that peat smoke out of their system to produce an unpeated whiskey. Uh, then we have the 10 year old, the 15 year old and the other expressions. They are at about 10 to 12 ppm. And in the end, we do have the heavily peated, which is around 45, 50 ppm. So a really heavily peat smoked whiskey. Yeah. The other thing is uh, you need water for a good whiskey. Um, the distillery has a, a local spring that is the Chapel Town Spring, and that supplies the distillery with fresh spring water because this is just really important for the distillation. So the next step here is the mash tun. It is a beautiful copper mash tun. It's a semi lauder mash tun, and it takes about one and a half thousand tons of, ma uh, of grist produ to produce seven and a half thousand liters of wort. Yeah, they have three cycles um, where they wash out all the sugars and all the starches for the wash bags to produce the beer or the wash um, for their distillation. Yeah, they have three cycles. That means uh, the first and the second cycle goes on to the fermentation and the third, third cycle is so low on sugar and starch um, that they actually use it in the next run uh, to wash out even more from the grist to produce more of that sugary substance that later becomes the whiskey. So here we have another one of these traditional factors for the distillery. It is the old wooden wash bags. They're made from Scottish large. They're actually made from the wood from the wash bags of the previous owner. Um, I think the old wash bags were probably pretty old, leaky. So the distillery broke it down and they made from the good wood, they made new wash bags. So these wash bags are really, really old, at least 35 years, but you can't really tell how old they are. And what else does the distillery is, they have uh, a traditional way of fermenting. As you can see, you have the CO2 blower, which is government regulated, 
but you don't have the switch blades. The switch blades usually break down the bubble so it doesn't bu bubble over. But they don't need that because they have um, what they call a cloudy mash. And that means you don't have that many bubbles in there and it doesn't bubble over. So yeah, very traditional. Also, the fermentation is really slow. The average time for fermentation is about 90 hours, which is extremely long. And why they actually need that is because they don't just go with the distiller's yeast, but they also mix in a little bit of brewer's yeast. Distiller's yeast is a very strong, fast yeast that gives you a lot of yield. But the brewer's yeast um, has more, is more flavorsome. So you have a bit of a more uh, richer, fruitier, nuttier character. And that's what the Ben Romach distillery is looking for. That richer, fruitier character that you know from the Ben Romach whiskies. Now we're at the heart of the distillery, the stills. To my right here, we have the wash still. The wash is filled into the still and then boiled. And it distills up to about 22% and we get what they call low wines. Low wines is the intermediate product and it is condensed through the condensers outside. You can always spot the wash still through, uh, through looking at the neck and you do have a watch glass there. That's there because um, the beer is bubbling and actually the beer has some solid bits in it and you never want to have the, the wash still over boiling because if these solid bits get into the condenser, they can clog it up and you get an overpressure and that is really, really dangerous. And then we have the spirit still, the second distillation process. And that is really, really important for the character of the whiskey. Um, first of all, you look at the, the shape of the spirit still. And here we have a pretty round, pear-shaped, with a reflux bowl. So you can straightforward distill it. And what is also really important is the speed at which the still is run. So here at Ben Romach, we have a hard pace of one and a half or one hour, 20 minutes, which is pretty fast. So this means that the, the everything is boiling very fast. So you do have a lot of oily and other flavor character um, particles being distilled and taken into the final product. And that means you do have a really rich, flavorsome, strong, even spicy character that comes out of this spirit still. Outside the distillery, we do have the condensers. They are shell and tube condensers, just condensing it down to a to a final product that is around 67% ABV. So the hard piece is between 63% and about 72% for the final spirit that is then filled into the cask. Nowadays, all the distilleries do barcodes and computer systems, but not Ben Romach. Ben Romach does it the old traditional style. You do have a stencil and then you roll on the name of the distillery. Here it says Ben Romach. And then you have the, the year 2018. And you also do need a cask number to remember what you filled inside the cask. This here is the stencil for the cask number. And then you put it on the cask and you roll it on. So you have the paint on the cask. Here it says Ben Romach 2018 number 1989. So really a very old, cool, stylish way of remembering where your cask is. Because you take the number and you write it down, what you filled into it, and then you bury it into your warehouse. And you have to also write down where you buried it so you can find it later. Yeah, the filling of the cask, also very traditional. You have this uh, bung opener, you drill it in, you uh, pull it out, and then you have the new make spirit from this wooden tank here, uh, and you can actually fill up the cask. And you have to hammer in a new bung with this yeah, big 
big mallet so you have it airtight yeah also the distillery really looks out at the quality of the wood um, they only use first fill casks so they have first fill sherry first fill bourbon and they do use hogshead but also the wood has only been used once for bourbon or sherry um, the only exception is the organic, but that doesn't use second fill casks, but it actually uses virgin oak casks. So casks that come from America that d haven't had any whiskey in them or anything else in them at all. Uh, yeah, but the distillery is very traditional, but it doesn't get around the taxman. So this is the last stage. All the casks are being weighed beforehand and after they have been filled they are being weighed by an old scale again so you know uh, write down how much the cask weighs before and after and then you can calculate how much you filled into the cask and this is then very important for the tax collection i'm here in one of the warehouses of ben romach um, uh, this is one of the five warehouses and they are all dunwich style warehouses yeah also in the warehouses, Ben Romach is really, really traditional. Because the Dunwich warehouses with the uh, earth floor is just the old style of maturing whiskey. And the thing is, you don't have a rack or anything, so it is really done by hand of um, putting up these casks. And what the guys in the warehouse do is they bring in the cask with a forklift and then they have a lifting tool and they lift one of the casks up and then they count at which casks they are and they actually do remember by heart uh, at which position you have to time the cask right and by timing i don't mean timing as in how long the uh, cask have to to mature but the timing is uh, the position of the bung because you want to store all the cask bung up to prevent leakage so they position the cask at the right time let's say you have the bung at uh, three o'clock and then you start rolling the cask and if you've done it right the bung will be exactly at 12 degree at uh, 12 o'clock and then you have the bung up and if you look around in the warehouse the guys did an amazing job and all the ben romach uh, signatures are all up very nicely done yeah What's inside the warehouses? The warehouses are mainly composed of sherry casks. Yeah, Ben Romach has 65% sherry casks and that's what yeah. defines the character of Ben Romach, high sherry content. Um, the bourbon and the hogsheads are stored three high, but the sherry casks are so huge that they say, yeah, we only store them too high. Yeah. After the casks have matured their time and is, uh, the whiskey is finished, then we um, transport them off to Gordon and McPhail, the independent bottler who owns the distillery, and they have a bottling line and they bottle the whiskies that are then being sold all around the world. So I highly encourage you to go out, find some Ben Romach whiskey and enjoy it because it's just a very traditional quality scotch whiskey thank you very much for watching if you found this video interesting then please give me a thumbs up and see you next time